my brother has always been very personable from the very beginning he always had a ton of friends around um, ever since we you know grew up together we went to the same high school and i think he had like twice as many friends as i did even though i was a year you know it didn't matter if it didn't matter if you knew him it didn't matter if you didn't know him um if you were a complete stranger you'd be like and you were you went to a meeting you'd probably sit next to you and be like hey uh you know thanks for coming um, hope you could stick around here. I'll show you know introduce you to a few people in FASA. Right. And in the uh, FASA meetings, he he always uh, said hello to everybody. And uh, as a new person in FASA, he would always check up on you, I'll call you to see if uh, you're coming. And uh, he always invited you. He always made sure you were invited. Um, no matter how big the club became. He always made sure that everybody knew what was going on, and, and he always made his way to make sure that when you had a drink, you had food, that uh, you were taken care of. He was, he was, he was a great host. You know, he got along with anybody. I'm sure the next person will say that, and you, you notice that. But one thing I learned from him is like, look, the next person is going to treat you as nice as long as you treat them nice. Since a younger, you know, he's you know, always joking around. You know, he, he never judged anybody. You know, he had a way of like really protecting people, especially his friends. He's the kind of guy that if you were drunk off your whatever, and you call them at three in the morning, he, even though he was probably drunk himself, will find a way to come get you to make sure that you got home safely. That was just the kind of guy that he was. Ronald was pretty much the most uh, outgoing, extroverted of them all, and so it was easy for us to get to know him. And he bridged that gap between the founding fathers to the next generation, not just his class, but the next class after that. Well, um, since childhood, uh, he's very sociable, very friendly, and uh, he's easy to go with. Even his. Uh, his um, elementary days, a lot of uh, his classmates in the Philippines like him. So when he came here, everybody likes him because he's uh, very also athletic. Yeah. He plays football, basketball, almost kind of all kinds of ball games. So that's why everybody always loves him. The stories I had with him has to deal with. I mean, just staying up late in his apartment, play guitar, tell stories, talking about Fossa and like, he did bring up like, you know, when I'm uh, not there anymore, you need people to help keep this going. And, you know, that's when he left, that was one of our goals was to make Fossa grow. And so that evening, after, you know, we got home, we did not stay in the house. That evening after we got home, he asked his cousin Wayne, who's also from the United States, to sleep in our room because it has uh, our room has air condition. That night he slept in the in the living room with just the open windows, and I didn't know that he was not feeling well already. That's how caring he is to uh, you know his cousin and to us. And I told him to wake me up before he leaves, but then he did not, and that was the last time I spent time with him. And like every morning when we were in the Philippines, I always wake up at 5 in the morning, I'm hungry. But that night when he died, at 3 in the morning, he died. Maybe I woke up around 8 o'clock in the morning. I was asleep, you know, like, like a baby. And maybe Bong was with me and tell me, go sleep upstairs in the morning. And that's what I remember about my last day. Grew up together in uh, basically like my brother. I was actually there in the Philippines and he passed away. Mama? <laughs> basically, um, we were going to go out one night in the Philippines and uh, we told all the parents that uh, we just be going down the street or uh, to like a couple bars and um, he ended up taking the van and uh, 
driving me and all my cousins about an hour and 45 minutes away over up to uh, to Kaitai. And, um, you know, just those was two days before he left for Baraka. And uh, basically my last time with him. And, uh, you know, just, just being there with him and being able to to spend his last days here <coughs> actually with him is uh, my favorite memory. So. I would say at the time when I was at, at school and he was there, he was the glue. It goes all the way back when we were at Squires. Everybody and everybody wanted to hang out with him. But whenever Rennell was there, no clicks. Every Faso was just as one. He would talk to the next person, talk to the next person, see how they're doing with classes and stuff. And I think that's one of the main legacies that I've learned from Bong. Is every Faso remained as one no matter what. When I joined Faso, the one main thing that um, I can remember that you know his friends would, would say was, gosh, he, he really made um, the club what it was. Like, it was a totally different experience uh, because they were friends with him. Um, he was the big brother that some of them never really had. And I think that being a part of a university that's that big, when even just one person impacts you in that way, it really does I mean, I tried. I mean, after he died, I was like, I think, I think that's the, that's the thing I want to take away from, uh, his past, to, from his passing, uh, that's the thing I learned from him, is just to show everybody a good time. It was more so that, like, I wanted them to feel part of, like, uh, like a crew, like, I wanted them to feel part of FASA. One of the things I always knew he was a great person, and, and evidence upon that was when he had um, his funeral, and how many people showed up, and it was just, uh, uh, there was so much, um, you know, appreciation, gratitude, you know, sincerity, condolences, you know, about him and his, to, towards his family, about his life, and uh, it was just a wonderful, amazing thing to have seen that. And then you, you know, it, it puts it in perspective how much, how many people he affected while he was around. Now, granted, you can't explain what he meant to the family and all his friends, because you know, he's the type of person that just <coughs> welcomed everybody. That's why uh, his friends from class established the scholarship because of what um, has done for him. Now, granted, like I said, when, you, when you're around the person all the time, you just kind of, you can BS with them and you just don't know how special those are until you until someone's gone. And, and I guess that's the saddest thing about my relationship with Ronell. You know, I just didn't know, and you know, I wish I could have said goodbye before he left. I feel very honored to have them, you know, some time with my brother and Virginia Tech, and we made lots of great memories together. I know a lot of people do. Oh yeah, uh, Bo is on, not only my son. Bo is my best friend, my very best friend, my buddy buddy, and uh, and uh, my eldest son, and that's Bo. You gotta ask yourself, because what can you do for FASA? What has FASA done for you? Well, I, I think people should apply for the scholarship because A, I mean, he was a very good and decent human being who was a lot of fun. And, you know, to get that scholarship, and I would hope that you had the same qualities as him, it'll help you out, but also it honors us, you know, the old heads and I'll honor you know, him and his family, and especially if he wouldn't. Uh, you know, he has gone too soon from this world, and he had a lot to give, and he gave the most at a time when he was with FASA. And for that name to be with a scholarship, it's, it's everything, I think. No one perfect than Rennell to have the name and that scholarship.